This is this is Jeroboam of Champagne. You are looking so fly tonight. I just want you to know that I'll always think of you as a grown crew. <clears throat> Nick? How'd you get in here? Don't you know how to knock? Baby, I'll, I gotta get to work. I'll catch up with you later. It is February 2024, and this is your Seller Series description. Okay, here we go. It's February, everyone. Uh, it's not much of a winter. I feel like uh, we're kind of like peaking at spring, even though I know I'm gonna like regret saying that uh, when we get dumped on by snow. Anyways, Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and without uh, Valentine's Day, February is kind of just January part two. And so let's talk about uh, wines that we love and wines that make us think of love. So starting off uh, in France, this is uh, from, you know, kind of the central, kind of like uh, the Massif Central, like the granitic vineyards of the Massif. Uh, this is uh, Domaine Cerule. And Domaine Cerule uh, is a husband-wife team that farm in the notes here. They got about 35 uh, estate uh, hectare that they're working on um, and 1.5 hectare of that uh, estate is dedicated to Viognier. This from, is from what I understand the highest elevation uh, Viognier uh, anywhere uh, in France. Uh, all granitic soils, all biodynamically farmed. Uh, you know, there's no malolactic fermentation. And what that means is that like they preserve kind of like the crisp, kind of focused freshness of that Viognier since it can kind of get oily and uh, just kind of like a, it can be kind of a top heavy white wine. But it, this is totally fresh and it has substance and kind of, uh, some some kind of weight and kind of that and a substance to it. Really love this one. So, uh, it's brand new in the market. There's like a half a dozen cases for the state, like period, um, uh, kind of on this first go around. They're small. Uh, this comes through our friend Kristen Watts, uh, who continues to show us really, really like high quality wines um, from some of the great new producers, new to us uh, French producers. So thank you, thank you, Kristen. So going to Kozlovich um, and the Malvasia Istriana from the Northern Adriatic. Uh, let me kind of like paint a picture here for you. So like, I remember uh, driving down uh, in Italy, driving down to the town of Trieste, which is like all the way over, about as far as you can go in Italy before you reach Slovenia and before you reach Croatia on the Adriatic though. And as you go down that really, really amazing city to have a cup of coffee, because it's known for coffee, um, you can see in the distance Slovenia right behind uh, the port. And beyond that, you can see uh, Croatia, the hills of Croatia and the Istrian Peninsula. And in that area, you know, uh, uh, Italy, uh, Slovenia, and uh, Northern Croatia, they grow this amazing grape called Malvasia Istriana, which is kind of peachy and salty uh, and aromatic and like textured. Like it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, white wine, especially for the uh, you know, kind of cooler months. I always find myself kind of like gravitating towards these styles of wine and kind of this wine in particular uh, in January. So I had the opportunity to share a glass of wine with this with a, a very good friend of mine recently and it was so lovely. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, really fantastic one. Uh, thank you, Kozlovich. Uh, going from Croatia all the way uh, well, back to uh, you know, back to Italy, uh, but we're near Verona here. And so this is Tenuta Roveglia on the shores of Lake Garda. And this is a very old estate. Uh, they have been farming these vineyards since 1404. Um, and it basically was a former monastery uh, at one point. And then uh, about four generations from now, Another family purchased this vineyard, a set of vineyards uh, on the shores of Lake Garda and really uh, kind of like tightened everything up. And over the last maybe uh, you know, a few decades, this has been a leading estate for uh, Lugana. And Lugana makes exceptional white wines, that appellation. Turbiana is the name of the grape variety. Um, you know, Trebbiano di Soave, like uh, there's the kind of synonymous in a way. Um, but what this is, how this is different, like, Soave for the most part, and Luganic tend to be light, crisp, easy drinking wines. This wine is like a powerhouse. It is textured, it is weighty, it has some botrytis to it, which means kind of that noble rot on the vines, which gives this wine like really lovely spice and depth. Um, really, really dig this wine. Uh, it spends 24 months in stainless steel, uh, which kind of really kind of allows that wine to kind of come together, uh, you know, before it goes uh, into bottles. So yeah, yeah, special, special white wine. Uh, going to um, Siakas. Siakas is the name of the producer right here. Husband and wife team farming some of the highest vineyards anywhere in Europe. Uh, they have vineyards that are 1,440 meters, which is insane. Like, that's really, really high. Like, we're talking, like, you know, 
there are vineyards in Argentina that are higher than that, you know, like, uh, you know, Salta and, and Mendoza, like, that's pretty flipping high, like, for Europe. Uh, they are in central Cyprus, um, and Cyprus is a unique area, like, let's not forget, like, Cyprus is, like, a really, like, strong political uh, fault line, kind of cultural fault line between, you know, the Turks and the, and the Greeks, and this is kind of, like, leaning on that Greek side, very much so, um, but you know, uh, I really love the kind of winemaking tradition uh, uh, here. All organic, 80 year old vines, um, you know, 600 cases made. This is like one of those wines that I had a bottle of over this past weekend. And as I'm sitting there watching football, which somehow I never really do, I was drinking this wine, I was thinking, oh my gosh, this wine is so good. It's like kind of calling for my wife, like, Annie, like, come try this wine. And it's all red fruit. It smells and tastes like strawberries, but it's not like this lean, kind of bright, acidic thing. It's warm and like, just really love the kind of ripeness to the fruit. Man, really, really special wine. And that's why, like, uh, you know, these are all kind of limited wines, but this one is another one that's really lovely kind of finds for us. So speaking of limited, they make like about 100 cases of this. We're moving on to our next wine. This is um, the Gardener. Um, you know, Chris and Suzanne make really lovely wines. Uh, we kind of know them maybe more for their horse and plow line of wines that kind of farm, uh, you know, kind of Sonoma and Napa uh, fruit. All organic, uh, really special producer, but they have this We've worked with the Pinot Noir from this producer in the past, and they're lovely, like really classic Russian River Valley single vineyard Pinot Noir. Um, this is from a vineyard called Devoto. Um, yeah, uh, you know, like it has that kind of like warm California generous fruit, which I love, you know, like uh, it's not all like tense high tone burgundy, like in my like life. You know, or like kind of like more streamlined organic, you know, like organ uh, producers. I really love Russian River Valley and Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir uh, and Santa Barbara and Santa Rita, you know, San Lucia, like all those like great terroir for California Pinot Noir. Like it's a real treat, the generous kind of like curvy fruit that we get from California Pinot. Noir. Like, and I think we should celebrate it. Um, and that's what that is. So. Uh, finishing up, this is um, Domaine de Grignier, and this is a winemaker named uh, Victor Ruiz, and I'm sorry, Vincent Ruiz, uh, and Vincent uh, was the protege of a winemaker that like I've been fascinated with for the last decade, this man named Frank Balthazar in Ornos, who inherited this amazing vineyard, you know, from Noel Versailles, essentially. So he, he kind of like cut his teeth in Cornas, like uh, making amazing Syrah. So when he moved to the Savoie uh, and uh, acquired this very historic vineyard called Domaine du Belluard, um, uh, they, they continue on that tradition of Savoie winemaking, but his heart has always been with Syrah and seemingly. And this is a wine from the Ardèche, you know, so like that, again, like that granitic central part of France, like a lot of volcanic activity, turning the ocean floor, uh, you know, uh, limestones into granites. Um, amazing terroir for Syrah and Gamay, but lovely, lovely Syrah. Carbonic, um, uh, you know, uh, all whole cluster, eight month, eight months in stainless steel, no sulfur added. Really lovely organic natural wine, you know, like special, special stuff. So, and new to us. A few cases have come into the state so far. I don't know how much more is going to come in because there's not a whole lot of it made. So. That is February, you know, um, we'll see. Uh, it's been pretty warm outside. Like, I think you could probably enjoy one of these out in the sunshine, like uh, uh, if you're so bold. Um, but more importantly, uh, I hope that you have an opportunity to share one of these with, uh, you know, with your love uh, and uh, enjoy, enjoy uh, all that wine kind of brings to, to love and relationships and all these lovely things. So I'm uh, spouting off, so I'm gonna kind of wrap this up. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy February. We'll see you all. Um, we'll see you all next month.